we we eventually want to bring the whole transact. We want to be the place that powers the transaction. So we're not really trying to be a marketplace with you know mm. hundreds of thousands of listings. We want this to be a place where a broker and investor can actually transact online. So we've got some third party integrations that we're looking to add, which would include you know diligence, title, contract negotiation, all the kind of things that we want to bring online. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. Gordon Smith is a seasoned real estate finance and private equity professional with extensive experience in asset management, brokerage, and operations. Gordon, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. Hey, the pleasure's mine. Gordon, hey, there are three questions I ask every guest who comes on the show in 90 seconds or less. Can you tell me where did you start? Where are you now? And how did you get there? Yeah, so I started my career at actually CBRE as a commercial real estate broker and then uh, <clears throat> made the transition to a private equity firm called Fortress Investment Group. And I am now running two technology, real estate technology platforms. One is by proxy and one is officebase.com. Uh, that's a lot of transition. Did you ever know, I guess, early on that you, that you had an interest in technology or was this something that just kind of came to you along the way? It, it came to me along the way. At, at Fortress, we made an investment in the first online marketplace, which was called auction.com, which was a residential platform. Right. And then, uh, and then 10X. And uh, I went on the board of that company and the founder you know, I saw what they were doing. It seemed really exciting, and he convinced me to leave Fortress and come run the commercial business for uh, for him, which was called 10X. Got it. So you you moved to 10X, and now you are at by proxy. Is that that the yeah. right next we, step? We, yeah, we built 10X up over around three years. That was sold to a private equity firm, and then I sort of took a year off and launched by proxy. Gotcha. So by proxy is your own animal. Like this is something you've it built, is, built from yep, the ground. I've got, I've got two co-founders, but it is my own animal. That's cool. I love that. And I'm certainly uh, in the early days back, or not say early, my early days in real estate, spent, spent plenty of time at auction.com auctions, uh, <laughs> buying foreclosure properties. That's how we cut our teeth. Uh, so no, and very familiar with that process. That's really cool. What what is the major problem in the marketplace that you see that you're trying to actively solve? Yeah, I think we're trying to. You know, if you look at a lot of marketplaces, they started with aggregation. You know, you look at you know it could be it could be it could be anything from fashion to you know the traditional auction platforms. And what's happened over time is that the quality of listing data on a lot of these sites. Uh, really produces a a tough buyer experience. They've got to sift through a lot of listings. Most of them or some of them are inaccurate. Um, many times they'll call the broker and not get a call back. I mean, we uh, we interviewed a Chicago investor who wanted to invest in Florida. He couldn't, he couldn't, you know, because no one knew who he was and he was coming from out of town, he could not get the mind share of the brokerage community there. So we've built, we've really built by proxy to be more of a, a buyer matching platform and we curate the listings. We make sure they're accurate. We ask the buyers to provide us detailed information on what they're looking for. We ask the broker to actually profile their listing and then hopefully we match them up. Uh, we, we joke it's Tinder for real estate, but hopefully we match them up inside our app rather than relying on, on what's traditionally been sort of an email blast that's undirected and usually gets deleted. Right. Yeah. There's certain, certainly plenty of that, uh, you know, those email blasts that you get. And the, I think the problem for, you know, for us as investors is getting those email blasts is remembering that, oh, hey, Gordon sent me an email. Like, oh yeah, I need to go back and review that. I did shoot. I did it today. I was at the doctor's office with my daughter. I'm like, oh yeah, somebody sent me, a broker sent me a deal last week and I haven't, I just, it, you know, you looked at it once, you, you hit read and then forgot about it. So yeah. And that's, yep. And that's bad for everybody. I mean, that's bad for the broker. That's bad for us as investors outside of, though, just creating a set of filters, right? I mean, it's yep. more, your platform yep. has to be more than filters, which is just like, oh, sure. I want to buy in Florida and I want to buy, you know, office space and I want to, it needs to be over 10,000, whatever. I'm just making up numbers. Yeah. What else did you guys do to really dial this in and say, this is a product that the market wants? Yeah. So we've developed, um, We've developed a bunch of tools that enable uh, a broker and an investor to transact. So 
We have a private listing tool, which allows a broker to run an off-market deal and decide who they want to admit so they can kind of curate their, their buyer database. Or the um, We just developed private event, which is actually the first, and since you're familiar with auction, you'll understand this, it's really the first self-service auction tool that can be run by the broker, um, he or she, rather than relying on a much more kind of structured auction process that the broker doesn't always control. That's pretty impressive. I love the yeah. idea of a private listing where it's like, hey, you know what? I want Sam to see this. I want Gordon to see it. I want three other people to see this deal. And again, as opposed to emailing them or texting them or calling you and say, hey, it's right here inside yeah. of the buy proxy platform. When you say quality goes down, I'm thinking of some other well-known sites. I probably shouldn't mention them, but quality goes down as these deals just get, you know, everybody uses, their, they put a name of a, a website in there and say that's where deals go to die, right? I think that's probably what you're, uh, what you're referring to. How did you get your company built? I mean, obviously you have a background in technology, but you're not a technology or a ne- technologist, is that even a word, yourself? Yeah. What did you yeah. Well, I obviously learned a lot of 10X when I ran that. Um, you know, I ran product and marketing. So, uh, and 10X really is a pure auction site. So, right. you know, we always had a, we always had a vision for really bringing the traditional process online. So, if you look at where we're headed long term, this should be a place for a for a broker to market their listing. Um, you know, list it, market it, and eventually transact online. That's our long term vision. But obviously, I've surrounded myself with you know a great engineering team. You know, our co-founder runs product. Um, she's got a lot of experience. And then, uh, you know, it's all about the team you built. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that's absolutely cool. And you guys really have two pieces, two components. You've got the broker side, which is one one part of your business that you serve. Yeah. And then you have the investor side that you serve. So that's, I mean, that's really, is. are those two different animals or is it something that it's kind of one and the same? No, they are. I mean, we believe fundamentally that, um, that our platform will get massive adoption if we can bring more investors to the platform, because that's ultimately what the brokerage community wants, right? They want, they want buyers for their listings. Um, and we have a couple of tools that are interesting for investors. We have a product called Data Explorer, which gives you all the national tax record data um, on every property in the United States, including owner unmasking, if we've got it, um, you know, transaction and financing history, demographic data, and we're going to keep adding to that. And that that product is actually free on our, our site. Wow, that's uh, that that's impressive. I mean, that that's a whole suite of tools. I mean, you've got so many different data providers out there. I mean, I'm trying to think of uh, you've got Black Knight, obviously. Yes. Um, First American has their own data product. Our partner is uh, is a relatively new company called Cherry. Okay. Uh, and we and we use them because they ingest all this data, but spend more time cleaning it. So it's 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 better quality than what you might get it from a raw tax record. Right, right. And so I guess from an end user experience, you guys monetize this from a subscription model, or how do, how do you guys make money on this? Yeah, we are purely a SaaS model. Which again, if you look at our self service auction product. You know the cost of of running that for a broker and an investor is meaningfully less than you know paying a three to five point buyer's premium. That that's fantastic. What are some problems in the marketplace right now that you guys haven't yet solved that you look forward to solving? We we eventually want to bring the whole transact. We want to be the place that powers the transaction. So we're not really trying to be a marketplace with you know mm. hundreds of thousands of listings. We want this to be a place where a broker and investor can actually transact online. So we've got some third-party integrations that we're looking to add, which would include, you know, diligence, title, contract negotiation, all the kind of things that we want to bring online. Are there are there asset classes? Uh, and I know, and I'm, I'm hopefully I'm asking the right question here. Uh, but are there asset classes that you guys don't have the data for? I asked this specifically because I used to be in parking. Uh, back pre-pandemic, <laughs> we bought parking lots and parking garages, and I couldn't find data on that anywhere. And it you know, was- that's actually a good. That's actually a good question. I'm going to go back and uh, there's definitely, you know, there's definitely 11 non-disclosure states where the data is not as good. Mm. Um, and there's roughly, I don't know, 3,300 counties in the U.S. and all of them kind of present their data differently. So, <laughs> you know, that's 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 a little bit of a challenge, but it's it's getting better and better. Um, I think. 
I think in general, we've got tax record data on pretty much everything. We might not have transaction data in the non-disclosure states. Right. Right. Yeah. And that, 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 that would be an interesting challenge to work around 11 non-disclosure states. And by that, can you, can you tell our listeners what that means? Yeah. So what it really means is, you know, when the deed is signed, um, and I think the mechanics are probably different in every state, but the sales price is not disclosed publicly. Mm-hmm. Right. Got it. That's uh, that's that's very, very helpful. Tell me this on the buyer matching side. Can you walk me through that process yep. and why that's yep. so important to what you guys do? Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the one of the buyer investor complaints is that when they submit a lead to, to another site, the broker just usually just gets an email address without any detail on who that person is. And in some cases, they're, the broker is getting so many leads that it's hard for them to follow up on all of them. Right. So our, our basic thesis is by asking the buyer to be very specific about what they're looking for. Um, and asking the broker to actually profile who they think the logical buyer is for this asset. Um, then we run a match. And if there is a match, then we put the investor's information in the broker's dashboard. Um, we do, we don't disclose the phone number until the investor says they'd like, you know, to speak to the broker. Cause we obviously want to respect that. Um, but that is basically, we run the algorithm and if there's a match, then we put the two together. I mean, that's so simple. It seems so simple, but yet I'm sure it's, it's quite complicated on, on the back end. But I mean, what a cool way to get curated listings sent right to you as an investor, as opposed to, again, you know, uh, reading that email from this morning when there's probably eight or 10 different properties on that, on that email blast. And I'm like, no, that's the wrong state. No, that's not. Da, 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 da. And you got to go yeah. all to the bottom. And then by the time you got to the bottom, somebody's interrupted you and you forgot all about it. Yeah, no, it's a real, it's a real problem. It's, and it's, you know, if you look at, um, you know, Apple's privacy changes, it's even harder for you as a marketer to track even who's opening those emails anymore. So, mm-hmm. you know, again, it's, it's, it's really curation over aggregation. Right, right. And I think one, one thing you said, though, that you guys don't want to become, though, is just a giant listing site. Like there's enough listing yeah. sites yeah. out there. So how do you, how do you effectively onboard brokers with their opportunities match those to then investors without becoming a listing site so it's it's not about the quantity quality or the quantity of listings we've got on the site we want a broker to think of our platform as a place to bring their listing and run their sales process Mm. so you know we don't need fifty thousand listings to do that we just need a very intentional broker who wants to run their process we spend all our time driving investors to our platform. We think we need roughly probably five to one investors for every listing, right? And then, you know, if they don't find anything that exactly matches what they're looking for, at least they've got our data product, um, you know, to do some discovery on their own. What's the adoption process been like for you guys? So right now we're kind of in a free promotional period. We're really spending more time just getting user adoption. Mm-hmm. Um, and we probably intend to, you know, start putting our paywall up in early 2023, but right now it's just about getting people to use and love the product. Yeah. And I want, I wondered about that, you know, and, and, I, and I'm not in the technology business, but I wondered about that early on, how you guys tackled that problem. Cause you know, early on you have to have people using the platform in order to generate interest, yep. generate, generate just kind of some, uh, momentum there. Uh, yeah. So but they'll, they'll always be a free component of our product. So. And that's, like I said, that's, that's our data product that will always be available to investors if they want to do some discovery. And that's g- our general theory. That's really, really cool. I absolutely love that. Is there anything else that comes to mind that you say, hey, here's something that I really wish people knew about our platform and about what we do that I haven't covered? Well, I think, you know, I think for a, for a broker who's looking to upload their listing, it's a very intuitive process. We've spent a lot of time, you know, if, if you are marketing a real t- retail asset, it'll then give you a choice of what type of retail asset. So um, I think, you know, as a, just a core listing product, it's actually very intuitive and easy to use. Um, and all our, all our messaging, it s- stays in the app. So you, every, every asset you've ever looked at or spoken to a broker, you have that in, in the app forever, right? So you always have a history of all your interactions. And I think that's, that's also a big difference. It sure, it sure is, especially as you're developing relationships with new brokers and new markets. Uh, it, it again can be, you know, you're solving problems that I think about where it's like, oh yeah, I reached out to somebody. 
I can't remember his name. Who was that again? And that's by email. Yeah. Right. Right. And then yeah. you're going to, then you're searching email by asset or where you think it was located. And then again, it's just a cluster of like, this yeah. is never going to actually locate that. That's really fantastic. So, so the idea is that, you know, all, all your, yeah, all your messaging either as an investor or a broker is all in your, in your app, in your dashboard. Man, that's really, really cool. When did you guys hit the, uh, the go live button? When, when did this officially launch? We went live in October, November of 21 with kind of our V1 of the, of the product. Um, we released, you know, private event, we released private listing kind of in the summer of this year. So it's, it's kind of really now, you know, we're, we're now kind of putting the pedal to the metal. Man, that's cool. I love it. I'm looking forward to getting in and spending more time there on your website. For those who are listening, that's by proxy, B-I-P-R-O-X-I dot com. Look forward to checking that out a little bit more. Gordon, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, and I know I just mentioned your website as well, but if our listeners want to get in touch with you, learn more about what you guys do, what's the best way to do that? Probably just my email. It's gordon at byproxy.com. Um, they're free to call me if you want me to give out my phone number, but probably email's easiest. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. Gordon, I'm looking forward to using your product. This will be a lot of fun. I'm going to spend some time uh, some time on there getting my information uploaded because I know there's certainly an asset class I specialize in that uh, I look forward to, uh, yeah, to putting it out there, what, what we're looking for. So thank you again for building the product. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on the show today. Awesome, Sam. Great to meet you.